reference cycles can leak memory. Rust's memory safety guarantees make it difficult, but not impossible, to accidentally create memory that is never cleaned up, known as a memory leak. Preventing memory leaks entirely is not one of Rust's guarantees in the same way that disallowing data races at compile time is, meaning memory leaks are memory safe in Rust. We can see that Rust allows memory leaks by using RCT and RefCLT. It's possible to create references where items refer to each other in a cycle. This creates memory leaks because the reference count of each item in the cycle will never reach zero and the values will never be dropped. Creating a reference cycle Let's look at how a reference cycle might happen and how to prevent it, starting with the definition of the list enum and a tail method in listing 1525. A cons list definition that holds a RefCLT, so we can modify what a cons variant is referring to. We're using another variation of the list definition from 15.5. The second element in the cons variant is now refcell rc list, meaning that instead of having the ability to modify the i32 value as we did in listing 15.24, we want to modify which list value a cons variant is pointing to. We're also adding a tail method to make it convenient for us to access the second item if we have a cons variant. In listing 1526, we're adding a main function that uses the definitions in listing 1525. This code creates a list in A and a list in B that points to the list in A. Then it modifies the list in A to point to B, creating a reference cycle. There are print line statements along the way to show what the reference counts are at various points in this process. Listing 1526, creating a reference cycle of two list values pointing to each other. We create an RC list instance holding a list value in the variable A with an initial list of 5 and nil. We then create an RC list instance holding another list value in the variable B that contains the value 10 and points to the list in A. We modify A so it points to B instead of nil, creating a cycle. We do that by using the tail method to get a reference to the ref cell RC list in A, which we put in the variable link. Then we use the borrow mute method on the ref cell RC list to change the value inside from an RC list that holds a nil value to the RC list in B. When we run this code, Keeping the last print line commented out for the moment, we'll get this output. The reference count of the RC list instances in both A and B are 2 after we change the list in A to point to B. At the end of main, Rust will try to drop B first which will decrease the count of the RC list instance in B by 1. However, because A is still referencing the RC list that was in B, that RC list has a count of 1 rather than 0, so the memory the RC list has on the heap won't be dropped. The memory will just sit there with a count of 1 forever. To visualize this reference cycle, 
we have created a diagram in figure 15.4, a reference cycle of lists A and B pointing to each other. <clears throat> if you uncomment the last print line and run the program, Rust will try to print this cycle with A pointing to B pointing to A and so forth until it overflows the stack. In this case, right after we create the reference cycle, the program ends. The consequences of this cycle aren't very dire. However, if a more complex program allocated lots of memory in a cycle and held onto it for a long time, the problem, the program, <laughs> would use more memory than it needed and might overwhelm the system causing it to run out of available memory. Creating reference cycles is not easily done but it's not impossible either. If you have ref cell T values that contain RCT values or similar nested combinations of types with interior mutability and reference counting you must ensure that you don't create cycles. You can't rely on Rust to catch them. Creating a reference cycle would be a logic bug in your program that you should use automated tests, code reviews, and other software development practices to minimize. Another solution for avoiding reference cycles is reorganizing your data structures so that some references express ownership and some references don't. As a result you can have cycles made up of some ownership relationships and some non-ownership relationships and only the ownership relationships affect whether or not a value can be dropped. In listing 1525 we always want cons variants to own their list so reorganizing the data structure isn't possible. Let's look at an example Look at an example using graphs made up of parent nodes and child nodes to see when non-ownership relationships are an appropriate way to prevent reference cycles. Preventing reference cycles. Turning an RCT into a weak T. So far, we've demonstrated that calling RC clone increases the strong count of an RCT instance, and an RCT instance is only cleaned up if its strong count is zero. You can also create a weak reference to the value within an RCT instance by calling RC downgrade and passing a reference to the RCT. When you call RC downgrade, you get a smart pointer of type weak T. Instead of increasing the strong count in the RCT instance by 1, calling RC downgrade increases the weak count by 1. The RCT type uses weak count to keep track of how many weak T references exist, similar to strong count. The difference is the weak count doesn't need to be 0 for the RCT instance to be cleaned up. Strong references are how you can share ownership of an RCT instance. Weak references don't express an ownership relationship. They won't cause a reference cycle because any cycle involving some weak references will be broken once the strong reference count of values involved is zero. Because the value that weak T references might have been dropped English is weird, my bad. Because the value that weak T references might have been dropped to do... Okay, I got this. This is my native language. I can do this. Because the value that weak T references might have been dropped... <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe it's nonsense.
has been dropped. Because the value that weak T references might have has been dropped, to do anything with the value that a weak T is pointing to, you must make sure the value still exists. Oh, I think I found a bug in the documentation. In the book. I'm sure the book maintainers <clears throat> watch my channel. So, you know, you left out a word. Or maybe I'm wrong. Because the value that a weak T reference might have have has been dropped because you can't rely on weak T reference values persisting to do anything with the value a weak T is pointing to you must make sure the value still exists do this by calling the upgrade method on a weak T instance which will return an option RCT. You'll get a result of sum if the RCT value has not been dropped yet, and a result of none if the RCT value has been dropped. Because upgrade returns an option T, Rust will ensure that the sum case and the none case are handled, and there won't be an invalid pointer. As an example, rather than using a list whose items know only about the next item, we'll create a tree whose items know about their children items and their parent items. Creating a tree data structure, a node with child nodes. To start, we'll build a tree with nodes that know about their child nodes. We'll create a struct named node that holds its own i32 value as well as references to its children node values. We want a node to own its children, and we want to share that ownership with variables so we can access each node in the tree directly. To do this, we define the vect items to be values of type rc node, which we also want to modify. Ew. We also want to modify which nodes are children of another node. So we have a ref cell t in children around the vec rc node. Next, we'll use our struct definition and create one node instance named leaf with the value 3 and no children and another instance named branch with the value 5 and leaf as one of its children as shown in listing 1527 creating a leaf node with no children and a branch node with a leaf as one of its children We clone the RC node in the leaf and store that in branch, meaning the node in the leaf now has two owners, leaf and branch. We can get from branch to leaf through branch.children, but there's no way to get from leaf to branch. The reason is that leaf has no reference to branch and doesn't know they're related. We want leaf to know that branch is its parent. We'll do that next. Adding a reference from a child to its parent. To make the child node aware of its parent, we need to add a parent field to our node struct definition. The trouble is in deciding what the type of parent should be. We know it can't contain an, a reference counter because that would create a reference cycle with leaf.parent pointing to branch and branch.children pointing to leaf, which would cause their strong count values to never be zero. 
Thinking about the relationships another way, a parent node should own its children. If a parent node is dropped, its child nodes should be dropped as well. However, a child should not own its parent. If we drop a child node, the parent should still exist. This is a case for weak references. So instead of RCT, we'll make the type of parent use weak T, specifically a ref cell weak node. Now our node struct definition looks like this. A node will be able to refer to its parent node, but it doesn't own its parent. In listing 1528, we update main to use this new definition so the leaf node will have a way to refer to its parent branch. A leaf node with a weak reference to its parent node branch. Creating the leaf node looks similar to how creating the leaf node looked in listing 1527 with the exception of the parent field. Leaf starts out without a parent, so we create a new empty weak node reference instance. At this point, when we try to get a reference to the parent of leaf by using the upgrade method, we get a none value. We see this in the output from the first print line statement. When we create the branch node, it will also have a new weak node reference in the parent field because branch doesn't have a parent node. We still have leaf as one of the children of branch. Once we have the node instance in branch, we can modify leaf to give it a weak node reference to its parent. We use the borrow mute method on the ref cell weak node in the parent field of leaf, and then we use the rc downgrade function to create a weak node reference to branch from the rc node in branch. When we print the parent of leaf again, this time we'll get a sum variant holding branch. Now leaf can access its parent. When we print leaf, we also avoid the cycle that eventually ended in a stack overflow like we had in listing 1526. The weak node references are printed as weak. The lack of infinite output indicates that this code didn't create a reference cycle. We can also tell this by looking at the values we get from calling RC strong count and RC weak count. Visualizing changes to strong count and weak count. Let's look at how the strong count and weak count values of the RC node instances change by creating a new inner scope and moving the creation of branch into that scope. By doing so, we can see what happens when branch is created and then dropped when it goes out of scope. The modifications are shown in listing 1529. Creating a branch in an inner scope and examining strong and weak reference counts. After leaf is created, its RC node has a strong count of 1 and a weak count of 0. In the inner scope, we create branch and associate it with leaf, at which point when we print the counts, the RC node in branch will have a strong count of 1 and a weak count of 1. For leaf.parent.0, 
pointing to branch with a weak node. When we print the counts in leaf, we'll see it will have a strong count of two because branch now has a clone of the RC node of leaf stored in branch.children, but we'll still have a weak count of zero. When the inner scope ends, branch goes out of scope and the strong count of the RC node decreases to zero, so its node is dropped. The weak count of one from leaf.parent has no bearing on whether or not node is dropped, so we don't get any memory leaks. If we try to access the parent of leaf after the end of the scope, we'll get none again. At the end of the program, the RC node in leaf has a strong count of 1 and a weak count of 0 because the variable leaf is now the only reference to the RC node again. All the logic that manages the counts and value dropping is built into RCT and weak T and their implementations of the drop trait. By specifying that the relationship from a child to its parent should be a weak T reference in the definition of node, you're able to have parent nodes point to child nodes and vice versa without creating a reference cycle and memory leaks. Summary. This chapter covered how to use smart pointers to make different guarantees and trade-offs from those Rust makes by default with regular references. The box T type has a known size and points to data allocated on the heap. The RC T type keeps track of the number of references to data on the heap so that data can have multiple owners. The ref cell type, with its interior immutability, gives us a type that we can use when we need an immutable type but need to change an inner value of that type. It also enforces the borrowing rules at runtime instead of compile pile time. Also discussed were the DREF and DROP traits, which enable a lot of the functionality of smart pointers. We explored weak reference cycles that can cause memory leaks. Ooh, I added the word weak. And it changed the meaning of the sentence. We explored reference cycles that can cause memory leaks and how to prevent them using weaked. If this chapter has piqued your interest and you want to implement your own smart pointers, check out the Rustinomicon for more useful information. Next, we'll talk about concurrency in Rust. You'll even learn about a few new smart pointers.